Hi everybody, for this video we're going to be looking at problem 5.60 from the Klein Organic Chemistry 3rd edition textbook, talking about drawing um, Fisher projections starting with a standard bond line projection. Um, this is a pretty common type of a question, uh, asking us to orient a more traditional organic structure into the Fisher structure, uh, which is commonly used in biochemistry, but can also be used in organic chemistry. Um, as we've previously discussed, and as you've read in the book, the Fisher projection is a structure whereby each uh, stereocenter, well, uh, not even stereocenter, each carbon is represented as a cross here. Um, and we know that the structure is set up so that all of the horizontal bonds are coming towards us, whereas all of the vertical bonds are going away from the viewer. And that's a very unusual structure and a very unusual way to think about orienting a large molecule. Um, and so it, it sometimes it's confusing to convert it back and forth from a standard organic structure into the Fisher projection. Um, I want to focus first on part A of this problem because part A only has two stereocenters. Uh, if we were to look at this, we see that we have the uh, carboxyl group uh, drawn on the right here and then carbon two is a stereocenter right there, and carbon three is a stereocenter right there. Um, carbon four is not a stereocenter because it has two hydrogens on it, and so we don't have to worry about that one when we're drawing our Fisher projection. Um, this problem does ask us to draw uh, the molecules with the carboxyl group at the top, and so for part A, um, actually, you know what, let me do that down here. For part A, we can certainly draw it in that orientation. And we will have our two stereocenters. We'll have our CO2H at the top and our CH2OH at the bottom. All right, so uh, now of course my uh, red is here and my blue is there. Now, what I think is the easiest way when we only have two stereocenters is to remember that the Fisher projection is that sort of strange, uh, perpetually curving backwards kind of uh, a view. If we were to look at it here, um, put our little eyeball over here and look at it this way, the carbons are perpetually going away from us. And so we have to orient this molecule, uh, the, the bond line structure, more in that way. And to do that, um, I'm going to first redraw it uh, with the CO2H at the top as requested. Um, and I'm just going to draw it in this way. So now I've got this kind of a setup, CH2OH down here. And uh, if I had done that, right, I've rotated it now uh, kind of 90 degrees up to the left, or uh, counterclockwise, I guess. Um, I've got the red OH group over here, and I've got the blue OH group over here, right? Um, so there's blue and there's red right there. Um, and that's fine, right? That's okay. But I have to remember that, in fact, um, I need these groups to be uh, perpetually curving backwards, if you will. And so I'm actually going to redraw this uh, just a little bit more here, where I'm going to go like this, like this, and like this. So I'm going to rotate around or, or sort of swivel around this bond right here. And in doing so, now I'll have my CO2H still there. My alcohol group is going to be moved uh, to the back over here. One OH group is going, uh, you know, unchanged. And the other OH group now will be uh, going like that. Okay, now I have that sort of perpetually uh, curving carbon backbone here. And so I can imagine putting my eyeball over on this side and looking at this molecule. And what I would find is that while both of those are now coming towards that eyeball, um, the one uh, at the top that I was drawing as a red OH, that one would be to the eyeball's left, right? If, I'm, uh, if I was laying on this page and I was looking uh, towards that molecule, that OH uh, marked in red would be drawn or uh, would be oriented to my left. 
whereas the one uh, in blue to my right going into the page, that would be on my right side. And so I would end up drawing the molecule like this. So while it uh, may seem counterintuitive to think that in the uh, bond line structure, I had the two OHs both on wedges, the fact that the bond line structure zigzags from carbon to carbon to carbon means that, in fact, in the Fisher projection, which is more of a, a, a curve, that sort of backwards uh, curve away from me, I have to remember that uh, they will be on opposite sides uh, as shown here, okay? When I'm talking about having uh, two, uh, sorry, more than two stereocenters, now I need to think about this in terms of how I can uh, represent um, all of them and what's going to happen when I actually do try to make that curve. Uh, and I'm going to show that here with part C. So let's put a, a line down here to separate part A down at the bottom. Part C shows me my uh, molecule, and I can see three stereocenters there, the three with the wedged OH groups. Um, but it's drawn, again, in that zigzag sort of standard structure. What I need to do, let me blow this up just a little, what I need to do is to imagine moving, rotating, if you will, this carbon um, down to the bottom side of the molecule if I want to keep the orientation the way it's drawn here. And in order to do that, I'm rotating these bonds here. So imagine that this molecule was built in a physical way and I grabbed that carbon and flipped it around such that the OH was pointed uh, down to the bottom. Well, the backbone's going to look strange when I do that. Okay, so I've got my HOCH2 sitting here. And then I go down to this OH, which is unchanged. And then I kind of go down further to this OH. And this is the one I twisted around, right? So if it had been pointed towards me when it was above the molecule, the way it was drawn, I'm going to grab it and twist it around to the bottom. Now the thing that was pointed towards me will end up pointed away from me. So I'm going to draw it on the, uh, the dashed line structure. And then I would go over here to this uh, other carbon that had the OH on a wedge, right? That one didn't move. And then I'm going to go the rest of the way up to my CO2H. All right, now in doing that, I've got that Fisher projection kind of a curve that I need to imagine here. And so my little uh, virtual eyeball is going to be here looking at the molecule like that. In that way, the carbon backbone is continuously curving away from my view, and that's in line with the Fisher kind of a, a, a drawing where all of the vertical bonds are drawn, um, are going away from me. Uh, this particular problem told me to orient the CO2H at the top, and so I'll just remind myself this is going to be the top of the molecule, this is going to be the bottom, and so when I draw the Fisher projection, I'll draw it over here, I'm going to have my CO2H at the top, I'm going to have my alcohol group at the bottom, that's not a stereocenter, so I'll just draw it all together, and then I have my three stereocenters in the middle, like that. Um, and again, we have to use that visual kind of a mentality, right? If I'm laying on the page here, and I'm looking at the molecule in the direction I drew that little eyeball, a little orange arrow, what I'm going to find is that that first hydroxyl group um, nearest the carb uh, carboxylic acid is actually going to be uh, on my left if I was laying down there. And so I'm going to draw it on the left right here. Um, Likewise, the one at the other end of the molecule, next to the alcohol group, is going to be also on my left, the same orientation. But the one in the middle is going to be on my right. It's going into the page, and so if I was laying down on the page, I would see that uh, on my right side. And so I can fill in the hydrogens like so, and that is my molecule. So the key thing in doing this with more than two stereocenters, or even with two, is to... Um, draw the molecule out to sort of imagine twisting whatever pieces of that structure you need to twist in order to get it to look like that continually curving, that sort of scorpion's tail or seahorse sort of a, uh, a continuously turned um, structure going away from the viewer. Once you have that, then you can 
you know, look at the relative positioning in this case that I had my uh, hydroxyl groups like this that were on the same direction, um, both on my left if I was laying down in that orientation, and then the hydroxyl group uh, that was opposite them there in the middle. This all takes practice, of course, and so, um, you know, the best advice I have is to practice as many problems as you can find in the textbook, in the homework, um, look for as many examples as you can. Also, you can look for some good drawing programs online. Uh, at the time of this recording, ChemSketch is free for personal use. You can get that, you can draw these molecules, you can have the program help you name them and, and sort of get a sense for why things are the way they are. Um, and sometimes that can be helpful. So with that, good luck, keep up the good work, and I will um, check back in with another video later.